let's go to the next one. Uh, coming again from the archives of Iceland. <laughs> uh, from the Independent. Netflix removes chromosome explanation of sexes from Bill Nye, the cringe guy. <coughs> sorry, the science guy. Netflix appears to have removed a segment from a 1996 episode of Bill Nye, the cringe guy, that attributes biological sex to chromosomes. The original broadcast of the episode, entitled Probability, saw a young woman explain, quote, I'm a girl, could have just as easily been a boy, though, because the probability of becoming a girl is always one in two. Well, actually, that's not exactly true. There are 107 boys for every 100 girls. But eh, anyway, uh, see, in, 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 inside each of our cells are these things called chromosomes, and they control whether we become a boy or a girl. Your mom has two X chromosomes in all of her cells, and your dad has one X and one Y chromosome in each of his cells, she continues. Uh, again, with the exception of your father's sperm cells. But anyway, before you're born, your mom gives you one of his... Your mom gives you one of his chromosomes. <sighs> Seriously, the independent. And your dad gives you one of his. My mom always gives you an X, and if dad gives you an X too, then uh, you become a girl. But if he gives you an Y, uh, then you become a boy. See, there are only two possibilities. The chance of becoming either one is always one in two, a 50-50 chance either way. It's like flipping a coin. Netflix has yet to clarify the reason for the edit, but it was likely made due to Nye, quote, embracing gender fluidity on his new Netflix show, Bill Nye Saves the World. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it pretty much sounds like he embraced Islam or something. Oh, he embraced gender fluidity. Uh, really? I mean, this is, uh, and, you know, many people use Orwellian in the wrong way, but this is Orwellian. In the, it is down the memory hole, yep. basically. Uh, you know, we've always been at war with Oceania. Uh, no, you haven't. <laughs> Amazing. Um, th this, I think, is a very worrying trend. I mean, at the end of the day, sure, Netflix is a private company and Bill Nye can do whatever he wants with his show and uh, the rights holders and whatnot. So I'm not making a legal argument here, but I'm making a cultural and moral argument. This is a very dangerous trend. Yeah. It, it is. It is. It, it it it's it's just uh, I feel like it's fundamentally dishonest and uh, like an an honest way would be to say you know yeah we've uh, we've I've, I've changed my mind and uh, you know this is what I said in the old program but I don't no longer believe that that would be honest um, I mean he would he would be wrong but at least he would be honest mm -hmm. um, but as it is just like deleting it without comment that just seems. Uh, quite fishy and uh, now th that that being said the the actual explanation offered in in that uh, old episode is like hilariously wrong like it's it's wrong in terms of biology it's wrong in terms of uh, mathematics and logic um, I've actually uh, watched that that part of the episode which you know, can of course be found on the internet because the internet doesn't forget yeah the um, internet is forever <laughs> And uh, basically, what, what what the explanation is that uh, you know there's two possibilities, uh, um, x x and x y. Which first of all, that that's wrong. That's like a minor point. It's also like uh, you could have like triple x. You could have x uh, y y. Uh, there's uh, various different possibilities, um, which are sort of rare. But uh, I mean, that's sort of a minor point that that they're not going into all the other uh, type of chromosomal arrangements. But even ignoring all of that. Um, so the explanation they give is that it's uh, um, like from your father you get either an X or a Y, and therefore it's three to fifty, which is completely wrong, like completely and yeah. utterly wrong. It, it's it would be fifty fifty if uh, you know half the cells were with X and half the cells with Y, but it's not the case. Yeah. And, and and also additionally, if you know the um, X and the Y cells are like, equally likely of uh, being being chosen, and so on. If all of that is is equal, then it's 50-50. But it's, it's just because there's two possibilities. Just possibilities doesn't mean it's 50-50. That's mm -hmm. just uh, completely um, completely wrong. And it, th this show was supposed to be about teaching children about probability, and that's exactly the wrong way of going about it. Uh, just because yeah. there's two possibilities doesn't mean it's 50-50. Yeah. Not everything is evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, if it wasn't about teaching probability, but rather you know, uh, basic biology for six-year-olds, 
I would have probably been less critical of it because you know, at the end of the day, you know, B Bill Nye is not a scientist. Let's be clear about that. And uh, he's been wrong on science multiple times. And the reason most, well, not most people, but a significant chunk of people uh, tend to still hold some degree of appreciation for this cringy dude is because, you know, he's popularizing some basic science to children, or he used to because he's not, no longer doing that. He's now bas popularizing uh, basic progressivist ideology uh, to, not to children anymore, but rather young adults and late teens, uh, and also cringy content overall. Uh, but you know, in the past, it was this thing. Oh well, at least he's uh, uh, giving the basics to you know six-year-olds or seven-year-olds and whatnot, and then they'll learn, learn the minutiae in school or on the internet later on in life. Which I guess it's it's a fair argument. But then again, as you said, this is a show supposed to teach the um, the basics of probability. In which case, it's no longer uh, acceptable to present such a uh, basically wrong argument because yeah, it's not it, just it's simplistic it's wrong it's it's also like a really dumbed down show like i, I haven't yeah. i've never watched the uh, bill Nye the science guy before i just uh, um in preparation talking about this article i've watched like a couple of minutes of of this uh, of this particular show like in the, in the beginning they they have this uh, sort of setup where there's like three doors and only one of them will lead to the uh, laboratory um where they have to go and I, at, when I saw this at first, I thought you know they were talking about uh, uh, using the the Monty Hall problem as sort of a, an uh, an illustration of uh, interesting probability theory stuff. Mm -hmm. But no, it was actually just like a, a setup for some slapstick where like he opens the door and like someone punches him in the balls or something, and uh, <laughs> like <laughs> finally he opens the last door and like he he. he um, he goes through and like he he he, um, he falls down and uh, uh, lands in an alley somewhere. Like it has nothing to do with probability. It's just uh, <laughs> it's just like cheap slapstick humor. Yeah, this is why the Bill Nye the cringe guy is very appropriate. Uh, most of his content is cringe. It's just that the the uh, modern day culture is slowly starting to realize just how cringy this guy is. And for many years, uh, people like me who said, look, this is just cringe and it's mostly crap and you shouldn't be feeding that to your child because it's just crap. Uh, you know, people like me were like, oh, you, you're bigoted, you're anti-science. And I'm like, no, I'm not anti-science, but I am anti-cringe. <laughs> and you know, in, in the past, it was a much more controversial argument to make. Whereas now, after Bill Nye embraced uh, Islam, <coughs> sorry, I mean gender fluidity, um, it, it, it's become a lot more acceptable to just say, come on, th this guy is just cringe. I mean, have you seen uh, the excerpts that are flowing around the internet of his latest show, Bill Nye Saves the World? Uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've seen that particular thing with the this kind of uh, song or dance where... Well, vagina has a voice. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And just for anyone listening, if you haven't seen this, uh, do watch it before you eat, not after you eat, because you might throw up. Um, look, at, look, look it up on YouTube. My vagina has a voice, and and enjoy the cringe. Uh, trigger warning: extreme cancer. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you, but nevertheless, you you probably should watch it just to see how degenerated this uh, the the shows made by Bill Nye have become. I mean. He, at the very least, this one, this 1996 show, uh, was you know partly wrong scientifically speaking and a bit cringy and whatnot. But it wasn't pure cancer. The 2017 show uh, is just pure cancer. Uh, I mean, it, it just is. And, and thankfully, we're in a in a period where uh, where children or teenagers are far less willing to believe stuff just because it comes from. Uh, a figure of authority, thank God for that, um, because otherwise it, I would have been even more worried. Um, because what this guy is promoting and what other uh, essentially progressive propagandists in the culture are promoting is extremely dangerous. This, uh, all, this, this business of gender fluidity is very dangerous. We covered, uh, what was it on the last episode or two episodes ago? Uh, with the Austrian clinician who, who um, oh, sorry, Australian 
clinician who said that the he's getting more and more teens who want to try out being a tranny and things like that. Uh, all of these things are happening because of this kind of cringe being promoted in the culture. Yeah, I think it was on the last show that, and it is indeed uh, dangerous. <clears throat> and again, just because there aren't too many cases yet, although there are definitely a lot more than 25 years ago, it, it, it still is dangerous because you, you, you you know that Australian clinician sees the very extreme cases, but there are also the less extreme but still very dangerous cases where they don't necessarily go to a clinician, but nevertheless still adopt uh, behaviors and values that uh, will end up being toxic for them. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, and I know this sounds very triggering, but still, uh, you know, all of these teens who adopt very toxic and retarded ideas either in college or in their high school influenced by Tumblr or whatnot, one day they'll have to uh, to try to get a job and that's when they'll hit the, a very, very cruel reality uh, because, you know, if all, all your qualifications are that you, you know, the uh, perfect, uh, correct pronouns of all the 59 gen genders, sorry, that's not a marketable skill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that even from a purely economic standpoint, these kinds of trends are, are dangerous. Not to mention from a societal and psychological uh, standpoint where they're, they're, they're definitely dangerous. Yeah. Uh, it, the, go ahead. Imagine going to a job interview and like the first thing is to introduce yourself and uh, um, uh, tell the interviewer your pronouns and then ask the interviewer his uh, or, or Xeer uh, preferred pronouns. Uh, <laughs> that might go well. Yeah, yeah, that might go. And you know, in most cases, you might get, end up meeting an interviewer who is like fifty years old, and you know, the interviewer might might be, yeah, we'll call you back. The door is that way. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, amazing, amazing. And uh, basically, and you know, Bill Nye is a symptom. I, I mean, uh, in, if anything, he's late to the party. I mean, this kind of insanity and lunacy has been going on for. Uh, for over a decade now, and it's gotten more and more extreme as years gone by. Uh, so, if anything, Bill Nye is uh, is late to the party, but nevertheless, he's a symptom to probably reaching or even slightly surpassing peak political correctness. I mean, the uh, the amount of negative reaction uh, this this thing got was unimaginable five years ago. So. In a way, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit too optimistic, but you know, so some people are saying that we've already passed peak, peak political correctness, and it's just the maximum it can get, and it's slowly starting to go get downhill. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but nevertheless, the negative reactions are much stronger than they used to be. Yeah, and I just lo love the hybrids of calling your show "Bill Nye Saves the World." Yeah. You know, if you're a scientist, the, the idea is that you're uh, supposed to be humble and self-critical and uh, uh, so on, but <laughs> there's not a shred of humility there. It's not because, well, for starters, again, Bill Nye is not a scientist. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an engineer who played a scientist on TV for a kid show. Yeah, basically. I mean, uh, there are, you know, the, there is the, the guy who plays guitar in the in the rock band Queen is much more of a scientist than he is. I mean, at the very least, that guy has a, a PhD in microbiology. So, you know, just saying. Uh, Brian May, that's the guy I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, he's an engineer who played scientist on TV, which is fine. I mean, it, it, I don't have a problem with that. But at the very least, don't be cringy. Uh, but yes, the, the, this extreme hubris of calling your show after yourselves and say you're, you yourself will save the world yeah, maybe not. Maybe you won't. <laughs> Very likely you won't. Uh, but then again, it's it, it's a general trend that we we're seeing uh, uh, on with progressive propagandists, whether they're scientists or not. This vulgar pride of intellectuals, uh, the well, or or pseudo intellectuals in the case of Bill Nye, you know, they think of themselves as so enlightened over the rest of us plebs uh, that they they just started to forget that they're still basic humans like everyone else and they're not really that special yeah and it's it's very symptomatic of uh, political discourse that uh, um it's not at all about you know finding out what's actually true it's it's just like you already know what the truth is 
you already know how to save the world, just need to uh, convince all the other stupid people um, mm -hmm. that they should just get along with your program and then everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, if, if people would, would spend like a quarter of the effort they they spend on uh, proselytizing, on like actually si thinking things through and uh, questioning their own beliefs, uh, things would look a lot better in this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's for true. most people, politics is not about you know finding out what is actually true. It's more like sort of a spectator sport of uh, you know cheering on your team, and it's. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't be half as fun if you were constantly questioning whether your team is actually the good guys or whether your team um, is actually doing a good job. It's it's, it's much 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 um, much more fun to just uh, you know wave those flags and uh, vilify the other teams and uh, you know beat up their fans and uh, so on. In the case of the left, very literally, as the anti far. Um, have been showing to us, <laughs> literally beating up the other team. Uh, but I don't know about the fun part. I mean, I I find it fun to ask myself, what if you're wrong? Uh, but you're weird. Sorry? But you're weird. Ah, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's a fair point, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm, I'm the same way. I... I, I often ask myself, what if I'm wrong? What if, uh, or what sort of assumptions am I making that are not justified? Uh, and I, I do uh, uh, very much enjoy reading a good argument from someone who's not on my side. Um, and it, but that's that's not like typical. Most people are not like that. Yeah, well, most people are not like that. But the problem, I I guess, is though, is that unlike. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when you would see, for instance, very hardline leftists and even downright commies coming with the in the same TV show with Thomas Sowell or Milton Friedman, uh, and they would argue with each other, and for some reason they wouldn't be physically beat up each other, and they wouldn't and they wouldn't be terribly insulting each other. I mean, sure, they would make jokes at the expense of each, uh, each at the expense of the other one, but they, they wouldn't insult each other. They, uh, you know. The left used to be more open to argument uh, than it is now. Uh, for instance, I when I whenever I say that I religiously read the Huffington Post, I religiously read Salon, and I do. I'm not joking. Um, as you're saying, there are many people who tell me, "Oh, you're weird," and then I realized most leftists don't uh, read at all places like Heat Street, from which we're going to read very soon. Uh, and much less so, they would read Breitbart or things like that. They they, they just don't do it ever. Yeah, and uh, and meanwhile we have uh, Bill Nye suggesting that you know maybe uh, climate science deniers should be put in jail. Yeah, yeah he, he didn't ought, ought to say that it should be done, but he said it's sort of uh, you know maybe that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know, remember his, his, his exact words, but at least he's not. He, he yeah. doesn't have the the uh, the obviously reasonable. Uh, a reaction that's that's an insane suggestion. Of course, they shouldn't be put in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, know, you have uh, uh, people suggesting that their ideological opponent should be locked up. Um, then you're really reaching dangerous, uh, in, in dangerous territory. Yeah, uh, he says that he's open to the idea of jailing those who deviate from the climate changes cons change consensus. That was the uh, the wording. Uh, the Inquisition much? <laughs> I mean, you know, there were many others who were very, very keen on uh, jail terms for those who deviate from the church's consensus or from the whatever craftsman guild consensus and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it, it's just that the uh, collectivists among us are, are far less willing to uh, to even hear an argument, let alone have an argument uh, with someone who disagrees with them, uh, and that's uh, and that's going to eventually lead to you know these kinds of all politically politically correct guys. It's going to lead to their downfall because sooner or later, and we're already seeing that uh, more and more people are like, "How about no? How about fuck you? I mean, you're not willing to argue anything, and you're going to call me evil and bigot and racist and whatnot." Just for disagreeing with you on how many degrees has the temperature changed in the last 20 years or whatnot, yeah, maybe fuck off. 
Yep. Because, you know, there's so much tolerance that normal people, I'm not saying conservative, I'm saying, I'm saying normal people. There's so much tolerance that normal people can have over someone calling them bigots for disagreeing with them. I mean, eventually, even the most moderate normal person is going to say, yeah, maybe no. Yeah, maybe we're done with the left. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm internally smiling on that development. <laughs> right. Uh, going to the last one, also from the uh, lunacy, uh, similar with the previous one, coming from Heat Street, uh, the culture wars section. Study describing breastfeeding as natural is unethical because it reinforces gender roles. It's ethically inappropriate for government and medical organizations to describe breastfeeding as natural because the term enforces rigid notions about gender roles, claims a new study in pediatrics. Coupling nature with motherhood can inadvertently support biologically deterministic arguments about the roles of men and women in the family, for example, that women should be the primary caretaker, the study says. The study notes that in recent years, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the World Health Organization, and several state departments of health have all promoted breastfeeding over bottle feeding using the term natural. Referencing the natural in breastfeeding promotion may inadvertently endorse a set of values about the family life and gender roles, which would be ethically inappropriate, the study says. Unless such public service announcements make transparent the values and belief that underline them, they should quit describing breastfeeding as natural. But the study authors, uh, Jessica Martucci and Anne Barnhill, clearly have in mind an alternative set of values and beliefs about which they are not transparent. It's unclear whether they're worried about how traditional female gender roles may limit women's progress in the workforce or whether this is part of the discussion about whether conventional views about motherhood exclude transgender people. Or perhaps this is just another example of how the progressive obsession with gender and sexuality has permeated all fields of academic study. Regardless, Martucci and Barnhill mask their agenda by also making the unconvincing secondary argument that describing breastfeeding as natural fuels the anti-vaccine movement. When public service announcements praise breastfeeding as natural, Martucci and Barnhill argue, the implication is that manufactured or mass-produced products are questionable or dangerous, so these promotions may unintentionally encourage parents to reject scientific progress elsewhere. If doing what is natural is best in the case of breastfeeding, how can we expect mothers to ignore that powerful and deeply persuasive worldview when making choices about vaccination, they write. There's certainly an assertive worldview woven throughout this paper, though we find it neither powerful nor deeply persuasive. So, <laughs> <laughs> I introduced this particular uh, piece of news in my regular Romanian language podcast, and uh, the wife of the guy with whom I'm making the podcast uh, when she heard the, when she heard me reading, uh, where actually I was translating this piece of news into Romanian, and she was like, "And where the hell is going? The, is going the is the kid going to suck from if he's not sucking from his mother's tip?" <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what normal people hear. Uh, that's normal people's reaction to these kinds of insanity. I mean, you know, this guy's wife is not aware of progressivism and and whatnot. And whenever you expose her to a progressive point, she's like. Uh, Maybe we should call the psychiatric unit, the psychiatric <laughs> facility. I mean, that, that's always a reaction. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, <sighs> describing breastfeeding as natural is unethical. Really? Uh, uh, and it, this thing with the anti-vaccine movement, this is what pissed me off when I was translating it into Romanian. Because uh, not only is it disingenuous, but it's downright wrong. And it's basically this elitist view of leftist intellectuals that uh, most people are so fucking stupid that if you tell them that breastfeeding is natural and good, then most people will be completely incapable of making the difference between breastfeeding and vaccines and then would, would for some reason, all of them end up believing that vaccines not being natural, they're all, they're, uh, will conclude, therefore, that they're unhealthy and bad and therefore won't go into um, won't go to a hospital to uh, subject their children to vaccination. This is a very elitist point of view, when in reality things are not happening that way. 
if anything, the most anti-vaccine uh, areas tend to be the the very wealthy and uh, liberal and open-minded and uh, you know woke <laughs> places. <laughs> it's not uh, it, it's not the poor conservative areas who tend to have a much higher uh, vaccination rate. You know, in in American terms, it's a uh, uh, people who vote for, say, the Green Party are mm -hmm. um, most skeptical more like of vaccines. To be, to be anti vaxxers Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Jill Stein is sort of uh, she was sort of ambiguous on the question. She didn't like want to outright. Uh, she, she like n neither outright condemned vaccinations nor endorsed them. She was sort of. Uh, um, taking this neutral uh, position because she knows that many of her supporters are against vaccinations because they are unnatural, mm -hmm. and that, that's sort of the the like little um, tiny image of truth in in that uh, um, in that feminist study or like uh, or article or whatever it is um, that it is not a good idea to conflate what is natural with what is good. Um, and concentrating on breastfeeding being natural is, I, I think, somewhat like it's obviously true. In a, it's obviously true, but uh, that's not, not a very important point. Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's it's good. Um, yeah, but people, they're not, a, they're not people a, dying of uh, of a childbirth is also natural. It's uh, <laughs> that that happens all the time in the, in the pre-industrial society, and uh, uh, but. Uh, uh, the, the reason breastfeeding is good is because, well, breastfeeding is uh, because as as of yet we haven't uh, discovered some sort of ba baby formula that's superior to breast milk. Um, maybe we'll discover something like that in the future. I think it's actually quite likely. But uh, as of right now, even the best uh, baby formula products are not quite as good as uh, actual breast milk from the actual mother. Yeah, and again, they're, they're not arguing against the, the focusing on natural. They're, they're very specific. They say yep. describing it as natural is unethical because it promotes certain values and beliefs, uh, end quote. So, uh, and, and, and this is what makes it lunacy because, you know, not describing it as natural uh, would be just wrong because it is. Uh, and, you know, m most of the... Um, ads that they're complaining about. I mean, I, I've Googled for the other podcast. Uh, I've Googled uh, some of them and they say, look, uh, and, and they're basically saying natural breastfeeding is good because, and then on the reasons you never have mm -hmm. anywhere, it's natural. No, the, the, it's natural. It, it's good because it has superior co components and whatnot. It helps the child, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, uh, you know, so they're complaining about it being described as natural uh, because it's coupling nature with motherhood. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. And what's wrong with that? Yeah, ba basically, they're they're um, complaining about people making true arguments in favor of something that is ideologically inconvenient for them. <laughs> basically, yeah. And if uh, ideology and reality conflict, then reality must be wrong. Yep. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, and. Uh, in the other podcast, I even made this argument that um, uh, even if it were true that describing it as natural somehow endorses a set of values of, about family and uh, about family life and gender roles and whatnot, even if all of that were true, I don't think it's true, but even if it, all of that would be true, uh, I still don't think it's a problem. Uh, because uh, as we always say on this show, uh, much to the to the uh, hatred of both feminists and MGTOWs, most people actually do prefer a traditional uh, arrangement and the, the, the traditional arrangement actually does work for most people. That doesn't mean uh, non-traditional arrangements should be forbidden, but it does mean that one should acknowledge that the traditional arrangement, there is a reason it's called traditional, because it actually works for most people most of the time. So even if it were true that describing it as natural may um, inadvertently endorse a set of values, as these feminists are saying in their quote-unquote study. Even if that were true, I still don't think it's wrong. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's impossible to um, to give any sort of advice without uh, implicitly endorsing some sort of value system. I mean, even if you just give uh, uh, people advice uh, in terms of you know um, 
you should breastfeed because it's uh, good for the health of your child. That implicitly assumes the value system that's uh, promoting the health of your child is a good thing. I mean, yeah. maybe your child will uh, grow up to be the next Hitler, then promoting the health of your child would be not a good idea. But uh, you know, we don't know that. And uh, sort of in general, we assume that uh, uh, improving the health of your child is good. That's, uh, that's sort of our value system that we put in. That's uh, not something we argue for. We just assume that at the start. And uh, people do that all the time with lots of uh, fairly uncontroversial um, um, value systems. And as long as it's not something that is like too outrageous, then that's the finest that what you have to accept, because otherwise you can just never make any sort of uh, normative statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although you said normative, so that's triggering in itself. Um, <laughs> um, if, I, if, I, if I could interject just a second. Please do. I, I might I might remind that that Hitler was not someone who was really taken care of as a child. <laughs> and was a liberal no, school he, dropout. He, he no, I, I mean I mean as, as a young child, he he really wasn't well taken care of. He didn't get any real. Neither was on this Breivik, for that matter. Um, so yeah. in other words, you're saying and if you don't breastfeed, you might be responsible for genocide. If no, what I'm saying is if you if you breastfeed, um, you might be able to build the type of familial bonds necessary to keep those types of things from happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, there, there's just yeah. want to be non-controversial. Do you? Well, it's it's a somebody who is who is neglected in in their childhood is much more likely to grow up having severe disorders or to um, uh, have psych uh, psychopathy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's definitely true. That we, we, we do have to take into account that there's the confounding factor that uh, uh, genetics might play in this, that uh, you know, uh, people with, uh, let's just call it, uh, quote-unquote, inferior genes are more likely to, to neglect their children. And so some, some of that uh, um, higher propensity towards... Uh, Psychopathy and uh, other sort of disorders uh, might be due to bad genes uh, passed on by the parents. That's the sure, idea. sure. So, some of it, so, some of it might very well be, and um, but what I'm what I'm saying is, you are much more likely to ferret it out if you have a family structure that is actually focused in on on bonding with the child. Uh, everything from breastfeeding to playing catch in the yard. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So you're much more likely to detect problems earlier because if you're not present as a parent, you don't know. You don't know what this kid's doing you don't, or you don't know what this kid's feeling on the inside. You can't address issues because you're not there. You haven't bonded. You're not doing anything. Yeah. And and even if there was a genetic component, you'd be much more likely to catch the signs that it is uh, being made manifest. And work to attenuate that somehow. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least tell the kid not to have any kids of his own. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I guess what you're saying is that if uh, uh, seven out of ten kids with bad genes go wrong, uh, when uh, if they're well taken care of, maybe that percentage can go much lower to maybe three out of ten. Uh, basically, or, to, oh, right, right, or or at the very least, at the very least, you have all the um, uh, you have all the information you need to be able to act mm -hmm. when things do go wrong. Mm -hmm. Be because mm -hmm. you know, you already mm -hmm. know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm not saying you can cure someone of psychopathy. What I am saying is that you can mitigate the damage that they do 
But if you have no idea what the heck is going on inside this kid, once he goes off the deep end, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, uh, well, you know, the almost all of the top neurosurgeons in the world are psychopaths, for instance. And they all share an almost identical quality. They all had a very, very, very caring family. Sure, not all of them, but most of them. Uh, of the psychopaths that end up neurosurgeons instead of something else. <laughs> right. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I think that this is ridiculous, the whole idea of not having these breast uh, breastfeeding is is somehow not natural i think that's that's bullshit um it's a continuation every, of tumblr ideology basically well i look at every mammal yeah on the planet <laughs> that's that's why they're called mammals exactly <laughs> that's and that's why they're called mammary glands <laughs> it's a distinctive feature of of mammals so you know to to not have to not have the scene as natural is just uh, yeah it's it's bullshit it's the same thing as saying um saying all the rest of the stupid things that these tumblrites like to say yeah but this is not coming from the tumblr that's <clears throat> that's why i regard it as very dangerous because We've come from, you know, all, all of these stupidities you, we used to read and make fun of them on the internet in 2009 on Tumblr. Now you have them from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, this kind of stupidity seeps in into mainstream science. And, uh, well, they, they complain that parents might, re might, might reject scientific progress somewhere, blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, you lefties are usually the driver, the main driver of that, because... If, if mainstream science ends up being discredited as a bunch of uh, militant leftists in most fields, which is already starting to be the case in some uh, Western countries, uh, that's a lot more dangerous and a lot more likely to drive parents to reject pr scientific progress than any uh, public service announcement put forth by the U.S. Department of Health that says breastfeeding is natural. Um, and one last thing that I need to say about this, the, uh, you know, the, their quote-unquote solution to this is, uh, unless such public service announcements make transparent the values and beliefs that underlie them, they should quit describing breastfeeding as natural. Okay, but then they themselves, the studies authors, do not make themselves, do not make transparent their own values and beliefs. Uh, so... Yeah. I take it that they view themselves as being completely neutral and unjudgmental as opposed to the plebs and bigots out there who think that humans are a sexually dimorphic species and there are things that are natural to women and are natural to men. Yeah, basically. <laughs> What's the movie, non legged movie? By biology, not real. <laughs> I mean, really, that's that's what it boils down to is the this this insipid um, notion that biology isn't real. Yeah, th this is why I keep on recommending to people to use uh, basically leftist shaming tactics. And when you when you see these kinds of loons that oh my god, breastfeeding is not natural, or uh, there is no such uh, such thing as um, men and women because we're all on a spectrum and things like that uh basically turn back the shaming and the politics at them and say well at least we're not biology denialists like you're sorry lot um <laughs> i mean you know whenever you disagree with them on on climate science for instance they call you a climate science denier which is uh, basically there is no such thing but you know call them back biology deniers because they are bill nye is a biology denier uh, Jessica Martucci and Anne Barnhill who wrote this disdainful article, um, they're biology deniers. Uh, maybe it's time we start playing this game too, because you know the, everyone can play this game. And uh, if this is the culture we live in, maybe we should start using its, uh, its nastiness uh, against basically the enemies of civilization. I mean, I'm calling them biology deniers is like a, a nice mere word, but it's it's not really any more accurate than uh, 
calling people who don't agree with the the quote unquote consensus on climate uh, change as as climate uh, science deniers. I didn't um, say it, I didn't say it's true. I said it's efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that, but uh, <laughs> it, well, they, they, they certainly believe in biology in terms of you know they 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 believe in evolution as long as it's like uh, below the neck, the neck. yeah, uh, or, or as long as it's like in uh, um, in human prehistory, like before uh, uh, humans left uh, or modern humans left Africa. As long as it's 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 before that, then you know. Um, biology can play in, in humans, and you have uh, human evolution, and so on. That's all fine, but like after that, we just like stopped evolving somehow. Even though obviously we didn't, because we evolved lots of things uh, since then, like uh, say different skin colors and uh, lactose tolerance, and all these sorts of obvious uh, biological. Um, I see, I see you're a but... fan of milk supremacy too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Can be> praised. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, then I guess uh, I'm out of things to say, except that I won't be here this Friday, May the 12th, because uh, I'm covering the national.